What's going on everybody? It's your boy Justin Norman. Hope you're feeling great wherever you are in the world. Today I'm going to focus on the plugins that are in Cakewalk because you may not know what a plugin is. A plugin is something that you use inside a DAW or some type of software to help modify or exaggerate the audio that you already recorded. So in Cakewalk, there's plenty of plugins that come with it that are free. And I definitely want to explain to you what each of them do. So we're gonna go step by step. This is not a mixing tutorial. This is just so you know exactly how to use them when you get to the point of mixing your own song. Just create a new project and then you should be able to start doing some things. Now on Cakewalk, it comes with a Sinaitis Suites. First things first, we wanna go ahead and insert an audio track. I just right click, press insert audio track, or you can press control T and that will allow you to do that. Go ahead and add some reverb or whatever delay or whatever type of effect you wanna go through. So Sinitis is all down here. So let's talk about Sinitis Reverb. Now, if you're not familiar with any of these plugins, just to let you know, uh, you can pan it. And pan just means that no matter what I do, if that this plugin will be panned and it'll always stay up front. On the reverb and on any of the plugins that are in here, there are always some type of presets. If you're not sure how to do the presets, basically you just click where it says no preset and then you should see some options that pop up. In this case, it just says default reverb. But this is not the preset that we're looking for. We're looking for down here on this section where it says bypass, undo, set up A, set up B, reset and preset. And then we can add our own preset. We can do preset manager or you can do the various ones that it has here. Oxbus, acoustic guitar, and then Sinitis FX. So you can pick any of these to help you start off and get the sound that you're looking for. And then you can kind of tweak it from there. So if you're not really sure exactly how to use this stuff, this is a good way to start because you can never go wrong with the preset. Most of the presets work pretty well in this particular software. I don't know about every other software, but these work really well. All right, let's go ahead and set this up so we can record something real quick. 12 input. I wanna know, I wanna know if you really like me, yeah. Raise this audio up some so we can have some good leg room to work with. When you're working with recording your own vocals, just know that you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about recording them. Just know if you have a good interface, then you can record at a lower volume and then always increase it later on. But it's good to record as high as you can. But in this case, because I'm not trying to sing real loud and I'm not trying to boost my microphone up even more. So I'm just going to boost it up from up here. So I want to know. I want to know if you really like me. All right. So when you're looking at the reverb, so like I said, you got different presets that you can use on here. Uh, I can change this to if I really want something that's really deep. Yeah. Okay. Now these are all used for aux. And what that means for aux is that this is like not going directly onto the channel, but it's going to a separate track. And then you're sending the signal from here to that aux track. I know. And you'll notice that just really affects. So now real quick about what the reverb, all of these little numbers and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's one of those things that you just want to play with to get it the best way you feel emotionally with your ears and how you feel for the song. Not every song is going to be the same. Um, not every take is going to be the same. So if you actually, if you actually record it, you know, a different way from the first time you record it, it's going to be totally different in the sound that you produce, especially if you're recording in various different rooms on various different mics. But some of the things that you want to pay attention to is uh, mainly the dry, which is at the bottom. OK, dry means that how much signal I'm allowing to come through the original signal, basically, how much of that signal I'm allowed to come through. So normally you have like some settings, you might say wet and dry. So wet is how much effects are coming through. Dry is how much of the original sound is coming through. In this case, the dry is turned all the way down. If I turn it all the way back up, now you hear my voice again with the effects. I want to know, I want to know if you really like me. Yeah. 
Early reflection deals with what reaches your ears after the initial sound or the direct signal. Like my vocal part, when I sing, what's the reverb that I automatically hear right after that? And sometimes this can be used to actually try to figure out exactly what kind of space you're working with, how big the room is that you're in. So keep that in mind. I, you can hear the difference between it. So I can mute it. Let's go back. I wanna know. I want to know if you... All right, I'm just going to mute the reverb and I'm going to mute the dry so you can just hear the early reflection. I want to know... Okay, and you know when I turn it down, you don't hear it at all. If you... Really Put the reverb back on. Put the dry back on signal, all right? And then the reverb, of course, is the amount of wet... And dry. So if I take it all the way down, you don't hear anything. I wanna know. You just hear the early reflection. I wanna know. Which does give it some type of processing. Uh, listen to it before and after my bypass this. I wanna know. I want. You can notice that it got a little wider too as well, which brings me to the next part down here at the bottom. There is a width section on here, and then you can do stereo, you can do mono. Uh, if you want to do width, you can go all the way to zero, you can go all the way up to 200, and then you can do a tail. A tail is very good if you want the uh, note to be sang, and you don't want to hear the effects until the very tail end of the note. So like if I, I want to know, even if I'm in the wrong key, I want to know. So if I do that, no, I want that reverb to come right after that versus it being on top of the note itself. All right, you can hear the difference between those two. Let's listen. I'm gonna exaggerate this. I want All right, well, it's a little bit too distorted. Let's turn this down. Turn it dry down some. No, no. I want no. And you can say you could tell that it's very washy, like it's all over the sounds. It just sounds like everything has reverb on it. If you put it on the tail, that makes a big difference though. I wanna know. I wanna know. Okay, hear the difference between. I wanna know. I wanna know. I don't know if you can hear that now, but you can hear a slight distinction between the words that I'm saying. So I can actually hear the words better when the tail is on versus when the tail is off. So you can play around with this. Uh, now, of course, I wouldn't have this much stereo. Uh, I normally don't really use stereo as much for the lead vocal, but if it's like background parts, then you definitely you want to make it more wide and as spacious as much as possible. On here at the top, there's an input and there's a mute for that as well. This is basically how much of that microphone or how much of that audio is coming into the reverb. I, I can adjust this. I can also do a low cut and a high cut. The low cut will allow me to control those frequencies because you might want to EQ your uh, reverb a little different. Like you might not want all the low end. Keep in mind that we're trying to keep as much low end as possible. All right. So uh, we've got the room size. We've got the diffusion. Pre-delay is how long it takes for the initial audio, the audio that you actually recorded to be heard, and then how long it takes for the reverb to actually kick in. So you can do it uh, as longer if you want to do it longer, or you can do it shorter. So here's shorter. Let's listen to that. I wanna know okay. if you really Okay, so you can now tell there's a very good distinction between what I'm singing and the reverb. Like the reverb is coming way later. So you can really adjust that room size. Of course, you can go real large, you can go real small. Diffusion allows you to actually control the surfaces that the reverb may bounce off of or the early reflections may bounce off of. So just think of it like this. If you're in a room and you have a lot of appliances, you got a lot of metallic things, a lot of mirrors and stuff, that sound is gonna bounce off all of those different obstacles. And you can kind of control that to make it more washy sound or you can make it more of a distinct sound. So let's listen to that and see what you can do with that. Yeah. No diffusion? I wanna know, I wanna know. Slow the pre-delay. Really 
Let's listen to it again. I want to know, I want to know if you really like me. Okay. You can hear ever so slight difference, and it'll be more effective if I actually increase the room size and the pre-delay. So it's one of those things. I mean, the bottom line is that you want to make sure that you have your reverb uh, you have your, you know, timing, you have your early reflection where you want it. If you want a dry signal, you have that mixed in well. Um, and then you can work with it, tweak it, you know, to get it the way you really want it.